Today, one of my students came and we decided to do something we talked about doing in the past that's kind of interesting, and it's called steganography, where you have a picture or audio file or movie or something, and in it you hide a secret message. And so we worked on the code a little bit in um, P5.js and JavaScript, and then I decided I'd try to do it in Python and be a little more complete about it. And so I put together kind of quickly this video. Uh, I may redo it later because the visual aids are kind of weak and I glossed over a lot of the explanations. So uh, watch it at double time speed or skip over the parts that aren't interesting. Um, I probably will come back later and uh, maybe make a multi-part sequence uh, because there's a lot involved, binary arithmetic and um, how pixels are stored and uh, Python library, NumPy, all sorts of stuff. So here's my first draft. Hello, would you believe that this image contains a couple of paragraphs of text about steganography from Wikipedia? Let me zoom in a little bit, see if you can see anything in here. There really is kind of encoded, hidden text in here throughout the whole image. It's not a constant uh, color through the whole image. Uh, would you like to see the text? Let's run this program, decode. It takes that image, runs it through a program I wrote that I'm going to show you, and then it prints the result. Here we go. This is the message. Steganography is the practice of concealing a file, message. You can read the rest of this if you want. You can hide a message in an image or a sound file or a movie or lots of other things. And we're going to look at how to do that. This program does the encoding. So if I change this message to my secret message and then uh, create the image, it'll make the image. Uh, now, normally, you probably won't do this with a plain image. Um, you could do this with a real image. And the way it works is these, if you think of numbers as being represented as uh, in binary with eight bits, like 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, you could think of that as a number one. Um, you could have three bytes that store the colors. So this is green which means there's zeros for red, there's the maximum number for green, and there's zero for blue. And what's the maximum number? Well, what's the biggest number you can represent with eight bits in binary? That's 255, or 2 to the 8th minus 1. So what we're going to do is, in the image, in the least significant bit, the rightmost bit, we're going to encode parts of our message. So just to make you a little diagram here, if you think of, um, well, what's the first letter in the message? Let's look at that. It's uh, capital S, steganography. So if I go to an ASCII chart and I look for a capital S, here's capital S. It has a binary value of 101-0011, 101-0011. That's at the lower levels in the computer, that's how we represent a capital S in binary with just on and off values or zeros and ones. Um, 101-0011, so let me write that in a little diagram. 101-0011, okay. So then you imagine that you have this picture. This picture consists of rows and columns of pixels. And this will be the top left pixel. And then within that pixel, there are amounts, quantities of red and green and blue. So I'm just going to do some dashed lines here. So red and green and blue. And most of this image that I showed you a moment ago has values um, of 255 in here. And there's no, so red, green, blue, there's no blue. And the red is usually zero. But what we're going to do is take the bits of our secret message, starting with, so here's the letter S. It's represented by this pattern of bits. 
we're going to take this one bit and we're going to put it right in here um, as the rightmost bit of the number representing how much red we want. So consider this red uh, quantity here. And if there's uh, no red, then it looks like this. And what we're doing is we're taking this one and we're putting it here. And since it's the rightmost bit, it's not very significant. It only changes the number, which goes from 0 to 255, by one value. So um, it's really uh, impossible, I don't want to say impossible, but uh, maybe it is impossible for the human eye to see such a small change. So then the, um, then the zero goes into the, the red part of the second pixel. And then we just spread along. So you might ask, well, how many pixels does it take to store the bits from one letter? from the letter S, how many pixels across? And the answer is eight, because they're eight bits. Uh, I actually, to be correct, I should include that leading zero bit. And it's really the zero that goes in here and the one that goes in here, but you get the idea. Okay, let's see how this all works. As you saw, there are encode and decode programs. Here's the encode program. And um, I have a module here called Stegapy, which we'll look at. And it has a function in there called create image. And you call create image, you give it the image text, you give it the message text, and it turns that into an image. Um, it creates an image, and in the least significant bits of the red colors of the pixels, it encodes the message bit by bit. Eight pixels for each letter because there are eight bits in the ASCII codes for each letter. Actually, ASCII is a seven-bit code, but it's been extended. Um, so we'll use all eight bits. Uh, the decode, it imports decode image from Stegapy, it calls it with the image, and that returns a string which we print to get the decoded message from the picture. Uh, everything else is in Stegapy, so let's go through here and talk about this. Where should we start? We've got create image and decode image. Those might be a good place to start. Let's look at uh, create image. Okay, create image we call with the message text, which is a string and the file name that we want to write the image into. Then we need to figure out how big the image needs to be so that it has enough pixels to encode the message. So we calculate the number of um, bits in the message. And then we're going to make the image a square. So we take the square root of the number of bits we need, and that gives us the uh, width and height of the image the square. Then we use NumPy, which is a handy way of, uh, one of its features is having arrays, and we're going to have an array of numbers for the pixels. And this creates an array of zeros with these dimensions, image width by image width by three. And the three here, what do you suppose that means when you consider the color? What do you have at each pixel? location. You have three numbers, how much red, green, and blue. And this says that each of these elements is to be an 8-bit unsigned integer. So we've been talking about 8 bits. Um, unsigned integer is just the numbers between 0 and 255 in 8 bits. And then we set everything to RGB. We set everything to green. So when we start out, the whole image is just green. And then we loop over the result of calling a bits provider with the message. So we're going to have to go look at bits provider. But for the moment, let's just accept that bits provider returns the bits 
from the message. And it gives us the bits one at a time. So you remember the letter S, it's got these bits. Bits provider is going to start giving us these bits in order. And then it's going to keep giving us bits as long as there are bits to be given. And we're enumerating over that those bits, uh, which means that we get two things back. We get a number, which is which bit we're on. And then we get the bit itself, which is going to be a 0 or a 1. And now we want to find the row and column in the picture corresponding to the bit we're working on. And that's what we do here. And then we get the current red value. Now, this, this green image has no red, but, it, but this code should work on a real picture, like a photograph or something that has lots of mixed colors. So what this does is gets the current red value. And then with this fancy bit of bit twiddling, it uh, turns off that low order bit. So no matter what that bit might be in your picture, let's say it looks like this. We're going to be using this rightmost bit here for to encode one of our bits from our message. So the first thing we have to do is turn it off, and then we will add um, this number to it. So we'll turn it off using this. And I don't think I'll go into this. This is using a bitwise AND operation with a bit mask. And this is negate, negation. Um, and then we turn on the bit. So just accept that this code sets the red quantity of the particular pixel that's going to hold the bit that we're inserting. And then this loop goes on and handles all the rest of the bits. Once we're done, we have this array of the colors. And then we use the, the Python image library to create an image from that and save it and then close it. That's the process of creating an image while abstracting over the bits provider part. Um, so now we'll look at the bits provider part. Here it is, up at the uh, top of the file. It's not that long, a little bit tricky. Um, the bits provider takes a message, which is a string of text, and it does something for every character in the message. It gets the ASCII value. So if you give it a capital S, it's going to give us this pattern. It's going to give it to us uh, as a, well, as an integer, which you can, normally we think of it as a decimal number, like the 97. Um, but we're going to be using it um, as a binary, as a binary number. Then we want to consider the powers of 2. So 2 to the 7th, 2 to the 7th. So what's a good way to explain this here? 2 to the 7th is, so you got 2 to the 0 is 1, and 2 to the 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. If these are all set to 1, then that adds up to 255. 2 to the 7th, for our purposes, refers to this bit. 2 to the 6th, 2 to the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 2 to the 0. So we're using the powers of 2 to access the bits of the character. And this range is taking, starting with 7 and going down to 0 uh, by 1 at a time. So the powers are going to be from 7 to 0. Then this yields either a 1 or a 0, depending on whether the bit is set. So it goes through all of these binary digits and yields a 1 or a 0 if the particular bit is set. Now, how does it do that? 
It looks at the ASCII value and it uses this bitwise AND with the power of two. So that's a way of just using that power and two to select the particular bit. And the yield, if you're not familiar with that, this function is a generator function. So it produces things in a different way using yield. I don't think I'll go into too much detail about that. Okay, now we're going back to where we called bits provider from. Um, good, so we've now explained the process of creating the image. So that implements the steganography, the encoding part of it. And now the decoding part is done here. And decode image takes a file name and we open the file name with the Python image library. And then we call get data from the Python image library, but we're only asking for the red values. Um, so what this gives us is a collection of the red values. And we pass that collection to char's provider or characters provider. And let's look at that now. Here it is. And it takes this sequence of these bits and it yields characters. So for each eight bits in that sequence, it yields one character. It enumerates each bit. It enumerates all the bits, gets one bit at a time, along with this number that tells which, which bit you're on. And then it finds the, the power. So imagine a, an endless, well not endless, but a, a long stream of bits. And for every eight, you're going to do something special. And you're going to take the powers of two from 76543210 and then use those to turn on um, the appropriate bit in the character that you're generating. This is, <laughs> I might come back later and do some better pictures and explanations of this part, but um, power of two by power of two, it goes and turns on the bits in the right place. And then when the power gets all the way down to zero, which means at the end of the, uh, each eight bits, then we use this Python chr function to give us the character um, from that ASCII code. So in, in these lines above, we're producing the ASCII code, and then here we're turning it into a character. And then if the character is a, is a printable character, and it's not a new line character, um, then, we, then we yield it. Otherwise, we're done. We've, um, we may run out of parts of the message before we get to the end of the image. And so that's what this is checking for. Okay, kind of rushed over that, but that's the characters provider. And that returns the characters, which we join together with join into a result, which is a string, and then we return that. Okay, that's a high level look at this uh, steganography process. Uh, maybe I'll come back and go into a little more detail with it or show you some different messages or try to visualize it somehow. Um, but uh, that's what we have for now.